Hello and welcome back to Transfer Hub. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about Jack Harrison, rumoured linked to Aston Villa. And I'm also going to talk about where I'm at with this window edging towards deadline day. Um, yesterday, we never did an episode and it just felt weird. I think literally every single day in January, we've done some form of episode. But uh, yesterday, we never had one out and... Um, yeah, it just felt proper weird. So here we are back with another little rumour and the deadline for the window is fast approaching. And I know I'm reading on social media, Villa fans, squeaky bum time. Um, I'm seeing people fretting, worrying, um, losing their shit about it. But let's breathe. Let's relax. Let's take it all in. Yeah. Unai Emery. Knows what he's doing, right, Villa fans? He knows what he's doing, right? Let's just keep reminding ourselves um, that he knows what he's doing. So, where I'm at then, signings-wise, pretty, pretty decent. You know, we brought in Moreno, uh, first choice left back now for Aston Villa. Um, I see him improving Aston Villa. I see him doing things for Aston Villa, which Luca Dean cannot do, going forward, more direct, more attacking, more quality, uh, a better delivery, and hopefully popping up with the odd goal or two. The exciting one of John Duran, 19-year-old striker, really excited by this one, can't wait to get behind him and back him at Aston Villa. I think he's got a real bright future ahead of him, and hopefully he can go up on a high trajectory. So that one's really, really good. And then the biggest thing I think we've done in this window is the outgoing side of things. Now, for me, it's all about standards. And Unai Emery brings the correct standards. He looks at the squad and he thinks, you know what? If you're not good enough, I'm happy for you to go. And if you can't improve us and you aren't to our standard, then it's time for you to go. And... Whereas before, I think we've just stockpiled and had them bloat the squad and just had average players that just don't improve us. And what I mean by that is as well, is like players that come in that don't fit the system that we're trying to do, but we just sign them anyway. So such as a Bednarak, you know, it's just we need we need a centre-back just as cover. Let's just get Bednarak because he'll come in and do a job. Not not good enough, you know. That's that's not okay. They're the signings that I'm so happy to see the back of. Augustinson. Need a, we need left back cover, but can he do a job? Is he all right? Like, yeah, we'll be all right. We're only four of us, so we'll just have him in. And he, you know, if he has to do a job for one or two games, he'll probably be able to do it. No, you're not good enough, mate. No, so the news coming out today, Augustinson's going back to his parent club and going out on loan to Mallorca. So, you know, Unai Emery knows what he's doing. And I think the fans that are looking at it thinking, oh, my God, we had two keepers on the bench at Southampton. You know, we've got no one that's on the bench. Well, would you rather have a full stacked out bench or a bench of players that you know are going to come on the pitch and impact the game properly and are going to do the correct roles for the team and improve us. That bench, full of players that are just bloating out the squad, you know, a Sanson in the match day squad on the bench never, ever comes on. Bednarak comes on to do a job, okay. Augustinson comes on to do a job. You know, you can even put Callum Chambers in that bracket now as well. You know, those type of players, we're just stockpiling average, average players. And Unai Emery's identified and said, you know what? If you're not good enough, we don't want you here. And, and that is what I love. So I'm really happy that we've gone down that road. And that is the road that we're going to go down. You know, he's happy to let Augustinson go, knowing that we've got Luca Dean. We've got Ash Young can play there. We've got a fully fit Matty Cash now. So we have got two left backs and two right backs. So we've got covering both those areas. Um, so I'm happy about that. 
yeah, Danny Ings, does it leave a slight up top? Yeah, it does. But we've brought in Duran that we're going to nurture and he can come off the bench. Um, and yeah, he was our top goal scorer, but £15 million. Contract running out in the summer. You weren't going to get £15 million the summer for him. Decent business for me. Decent, decent business. And I really, really rate it. So it leaves the squad thin, but they're players that don't impact Aston Villa anyway. So... That's where I'm at on that front. And yeah, that's that's just where I'm at on it. You know, that's my honest, honest thoughts on it. It leaves us light, but they don't play for us. They don't impact the team anyway. They're not first team players. They're just bang average. Trust Unai Emery. He knows what he's doing. Unai Emery knows what he's doing more than I do, more than what anybody watches this show does, than what any other Villa fan does, if he's happy to let these players go and leave us light up top, then if he's happy, I'm happy, right? That's how I'm looking at it, right? So with potential incomings, what do I think is going to happen? We haven't currently bid for Gwendouzi yet. We have obviously spoke to him or representatives. There's noise. There's summer in this. I feel like we're going to go late in the window with a sum of money and it's going to be, this is what we're offering. Take it or leave it. This January market is so difficult because you're trying to get players in from clubs that might be at the top of their league. They might be fighting for Europe. They might be in the relegation zone. So there's all different stories at the club that a player's coming from. So it's really difficult to get the right players in. But again, I trust Emery. If he's, they're not first teamers and they're not coming to improve Aston Villa, I don't want them. I really don't want them. I don't want to have a busy deadline day just for the sake of making signings so the squad looks nice and pretty. Because if you want that, you're basically going back to the days of signing Tom Carroll, a Borgia Baston, an Ali Samata. You're getting those levels of players in just for the sake of bringing players in. And it's about adding real quality and players coming in and making a difference to the side. If we sign the average Joe to go up top, are they going to fire us into Europe? Probably not, because they're going to sit behind Ollie Watkins anyway, right? If we sign another left-back, they're going to sit behind Moreno and Luca Dean. If we sign another centre-back, they're going to sit behind Mings. They're going to sit behind Concert. They're going to sit behind Chambers. So we're only looking at signings based on that if people get injured. And you can't look at it like that, because... West Ham really wanted a striker. They went out and got Danny Ings for £15 million, right? They really needed a striker to get the goals for him. On his debut, does his need. Out for three or four weeks. So they've gone out and spent £15 million on a striker, and now he's out for four or five weeks. So anything can happen. Anything can happen. So my point is... And my point has been what it's been about all January. Unless they're coming in to make this first team better, there's no point of signing anybody because you're just going to sit on the bench and not improve the team. And that's the bottom line. So when Doozy comes in, he walks straight into that Villa side. We've still got McGinn to come back. We've still got Luca Dean to come back. We've got Carlos Elby coming back as well at some point. March time. So if we don't make any signings now, we're still going to be okay. Look what Emery's doing with this squad. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'll just think back Emery, trust what he's doing. And that is, that is literally where I'm at. You know, they've obviously got targets that they're working on. They're not just sitting, doing nothing. Um, so I imagine if, it's the right price. If it suits Villa, we'll do the deal. You know, so that is where I am literally at with Aston Villa in this window. So we are lit with Jack Harrison. What are my thoughts? I like him. I think he's good. He works really hard. 
he has got qualities that I like. Um, pacey, direct. Uh, he's great at pressing. His energy is good. Uh, is he searching for his best form? I think he is. I think he's really searching for his best form. I think he's searching for his Bielsa form. Um, you know, that's the best Jack Harrison we've seen in the Premier League. So I think that was two seasons ago. So, you know, I think he's he's, he's a good player. Um, does he walk straight into our side and improve it? I don't think he does. Um, he's 26 years of age, another left-footed player. Uh, his strengths are his high pressing. Uh, his creativity rate is 71. Um, so far this season, he's started 15 games, scored one goal. He's got four assists. And if we go back again to Prime Bielsa, he'd got eight goals, eight assists, absolutely flying, 54% successful dribble. So, you know, he's a good player, a tidy player. I like him. Do I think he's an Emery player? No, I'm not sure where the rumours come from. Alex Crook is reporting it. Um, so I'm not too sure on Harrison, but Villa fans, let me know what your thoughts are. Are you a fan? Do you rate him? Um, like I say, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether he really does improve us. Um, I've got a quote here from uh, Fabriziano Romano on uh, Guendouzi. At the moment from Marseille, they are waiting for the official bid. They know about the interest. The player is aware of the interest of Unai Emery, but still no official bid. So I just feel like it's going to go late. It's going to go late. And I think where I'm at, I think he, I think he's, he would come. I think we're giving Marseille no sort of room for too much negotiation. So from our front, it's going to be, here's the X amount of money, whether it's 30, 35 million. This is our bid. We'll walk away today if you don't accept this bid and it won't go any higher. Um, take it or leave it and we'll see what their response is. That That's honestly how I feel like it is. So I thought I'd just give my honest views on the window and where I'm at. Villa fans, let me know what your thoughts are. Where are you at? Where's your headspace at? But we just need to remember we're in safe hands, good hands. We're not getting relegated. Yes, we'd all love Europe. We're in a good position to push for Europe. But we're after good players. And it's difficult to sign them in January. So let's just see what happens. We might have some up our sleeve. We might have three or four coming in. We might have one coming in. We might have none coming in. But as long as it's not Ali Samata, Tom Carroll, Borja Baston, Simon Dawkins, then I'm a happy, happy Villa fan. So up the Villa. Cheers for the support and uh, speak to you all soon.